Okay, so this is uh, myself, Mr. Ashton, going through PPE paper two. Um, so, first question that you had was constructions. So when you're looking at 45 and 60, there's two things you should always be able to do. You should always be able to construct 90 degrees, which is what is called a perpendicular bisector of a line that will automatically create 90 degrees. And the second thing you should always be able to do is create 60 degrees, which is good because one of those is 60, um, which is called an equilateral triangle. Okay? So, first of all, I've got to make 60 degrees at ACB. So that's this line here, ACB. So, the way I do that is I open my compass to an amount. Before you go too far, make sure the point of your pencil and the compass are the same length, and open it to, I don't know, roughly around about 6 centimetres. I'm then going to draw an arc like that. And notice I'm turning the page rather than turning the compass. I tend to hold it closer to the point so I don't accidentally slip. I now come and move the point to where it crosses there and cross by there. Now what that has done is that has created an equilateral triangle. At that point there, if I join it up to C, that will create 60 degrees. If I then went and joined that one there to there, that would create another 60 degrees up here and here, but I was only asked to create 60 degrees at C. To make the 45 degrees, I'm going to make 90 degrees. I'm going to open my compass to what is obviously more than halfway of the line. Okay, So roughly about there for me. You draw more or less a semicircle from here. So a semicircle there, going to the other end of the line here now, and drawing that arc there, where those two things cross, that creates 90 degrees. But I just realised I've made a small mistake here. I'm creating 90 degrees but not at this point here, at A. I need to be doing that at this point here. Okay? So, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to mark by here, and I'm going to extend the line, okay, to there. I'm going to open my compass to a little bit, and I'm going to mark here, and I'm going to come over, keeping exactly the same little bit there, and mark by there. I'm now going to open my compass to a little bit more than halfway, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I just did, but I'm going to make sure this time I actually get 90 degrees going through A. Okay? So that is now 90 degrees through A. Now I'm not going to draw a line in pen because I don't actually want 90 degrees A. I actually want 45 degrees A. So at the moment, there is my 90 degrees going through A. I wanted to create 45 degrees. I've got 90, and one of the things you should be able to do now is to create a 45 degrees angle by cutting this angle in half. The way that you do that is you open your compass to a bit again, around about 3 centimetres. Point where, um, where the angle is, there. Within here now, keeping exactly the same width. Compass where it crossed the line here, there. Compass where that crossed the line there, there. Through that point there, and through the angle, that will create 45 degrees. So I'm just going to extend that line now to there. That's 45 degrees. And then I'm going to extend this one here. There we go. There's my triangle with exactly what they set. Okay? The next question here. It says circles with, um, circles with diameters are of equal length are congruent. That is true. Because the diameter is the same width the whole way around, they are congruent. It means you can physically pick up and place it onto the other one. Regular pentagons whose perimeters are of equal length are congruent. That is also true because regular means they must have exactly the same size and the same angle. So if they have the same perimeter, that makes sense. Scalene triangles have the same uh, symmetry angles are congruent. That's not true because I could draw like a much, much, much bigger triangle than that with the same angles and it wouldn't fit on it exactly. And rectangles uh, with equal areas are congruent. Well, that's not true. You can think of this, uh, this one here, which is 24 centimetres squared, would be 6 and 4. And then I've got one here, which is also 24, but this time 8 and 3. So that's not true either. Okay? Over the page. Okay, trial and improvement. Now, there's a way to set this out. You should always say try x equals... You want your middle column to be really wide, because that's where you're going to do your, do your work, and this is your comment. Okay? This will be the x cubed minus 6x minus 4 equals 0. You always try the numbers that they give you, because you will get one method mark for doing the two numbers they give you. Okay? All I do is I change into my calculator, wherever I see an x, I change it to open brackets, and then I just keep on uh, using the replay button and changing and deleting them. So, brackets 2 cubed. Minus 6 brackets 2, 
minus 4 equals minus 8. I'm supposed to be getting 0, so that is too small. You could just say TS, that'd be fine. I'm going to use the replay button, change that to 3, and change this one to 3, and it equals 5. Okay, so that's too big. So that means I get the mark where it goes too small, too big, and these have to be consecutive numbers, always do the numbers they state. Now, you can do two methods here. You can either just say, we'll try 2.5, but you might say it's closer to 3, because this answer here is closer to 0 than the 2 is. So I'm actually going to try maybe 2.6, and then when I chuck in 2.6, I get a minus number, minus 2.2. So I could have actually gone a little bit bigger by the looks of it. So that is too small still. Okay. Now I need this to go too small, too big again, but these must be consecutive numbers, so don't miss any values here. You go up in one decimal places now. So I've tried 6, now I try 7, then try 8 if needs be. So I'll go and try this, change that to a 7, and change that to a 7, and I still get a minus number. Um, is it minus 0 point, minus 0 0.517, so that's still too small. So consecutive numbers, it has to be 8 now. Okay. So delete that 7, change it to 8, make sure you change it on both. And I get a positive number, so I get 1.152. That is too big. That's where I get my next mark here, but it must go too small, too big, and these must be consecutive numbers. Okay, so that's my second mark. What I must choose now, I've got an answer here, 2.7. I've got an answer here, which is 2.8. I'm trying to work out which one it is. And they said they wanted the answer to one decimal place. Now you always go one more, so in this case you're definitely going to go to two decimal places. Okay. Now the way that we do that is we knew this answer was too small, so we said try a bigger number. We did, we tried 2.8, that was too big, that's telling me try a smaller number. We're going to chop that line exactly in half. To chop that in half, I would go 2.75. So 2.75 goes in there, and I'm now going to change this to 2.75. There and there, and I get it. it's a positive number, so that is telling me it's too big. As soon as I did that number, I got my third mark, and now I have my third mark, now I can get my second mark, provided I choose correctly. If it's too big, that is telling me to try a smaller number. So that means it must be closer to 2.7, so I finally state x equals 2.7 to one decimal place. That would get me my fourth and final mark, but I must do this step here to two decimal places. I must go one more, because if I don't, I don't get that fourth mark. You'd only get two marks. Okay, over the page, number four. So this one here was on Venn diagrams. It tells us a total of 45 councillors make up planning, finance, and education committees. So we know that this must add up to 45. Some of the councillors sit on two of these committees. No council sits on all three, so I'm actually going to put zero in there, but you can get away with putting nothing in there and leaving it blank, but I prefer to put in zero. Two councillors sit on both the planning committee and the education committee, so that means they are there are two of them that do there and there. Okay, so I'm going to tick that one off. There are 18 councillors in the education committee, so that means that in within education I've got two and ten, so that's 12 of them already accounted for. That means six of them, because two add ten add six makes 18, that are there all together. We were told a total of 45 councillors make up these three committees. So far, I've got 12, 10, 6 and 6, so that's 12 again, and a 2 so far. So 12, 10, 22, 34, 38, hoping so, uh, 38, and then 45. I don't know why I'm doing all this because I've got a calculator. You can put this into your calculator and it works out that it's 9. Okay, so that's how I do that one. It says how many of these uh, councillors sit on both the uh, planning and finance committees. Planning and finance, there we go, it's already filled in for six. One of these 45 calculators is chosen at random. What is probably the councillor sits on the planning committee? Uh, so planning had nine, two, and six. So nine, two, and six came to 17 out of a 45 chance. Okay, that's what I've written there. Okay, over the page. Right angle triangle, nice and early, that's telling me it's C grade mass. It's not asking me to find an angle, this means it was Pythagoras' theorem. I write this as A squared equals B squared equals H squared, but it's absolutely fine to say A squared plus B squared equals C squared, or X squared plus Y squared equals Z squared, whatever you're more com comfortable with. When I'm given the hypotenuse, like I am in this case, I tweak the formula to H squared minus B squared equals A squared. As long as it's the big one squared, take away that one squared, it'll equal the other one squared. So that's 18.4 squared, take away 12. 0.5 squared, that will equal a squared. 
I'm going to take the square root over, and then I'm going to put this into my calculator now. So 18.4 squared minus 12.5 squared. And that comes to this number here, 182.31. And then I will use my calculator. Now, instead of writing that whole number down, I'll just say square root ands, and that will do that for me in one step. And I'll round that to one decimal place because it says to round it to one decimal place. So 13.5 centimetres, but I'll reference there to one dp. Next question, question number six. Okay, so question number six says, uh, bus company emphasizes two prices for return journey between Aberystwyth and Cardiff, an adult price and the price of the child. Family, two adults, three children uh, paid that much. Group consisting of three adults, four children paid that much. Use an algebraic method to calculate the total amount paid by the group of four and the group, um, and the group of two children. So I just need to create a um, simultaneous equation here. Now it makes sense to me for the first one to say two adults plus three children is equal to 7150. I'm going to get rid of the pound sign so there's no like more symbols or anything like that. I'm just going to take the mass out of it. And then the second one, three adults plus four children is equal to 101 exactly. I either need to get the adults the same or the children the same to then eliminate. I'm going to do the adults because they are um, smaller numbers than the children. So it makes more sense to get the adults the same here. So um, 3 and 2 there. So that 3 times by the opposite coefficient. That 2 times by the opposite coefficient. So that is my equation 1, equation 2. This will generate two new equations, 3 and 4. That is 6 adults plus 9 children should have come to 7150 times by 3 comes to 214 pounds and it's 50 pence really. Make sure you put in the, uh, the second decimal point because it's money. Times this by two gives me six adults plus eight children equals, well, I can do that in my head, that's 202. So then I do question or equation three, take away equation four. Six adults, take away six adults, gone. Nine children, take away eight children, gives me the price of one child. 214, 50, take away the 202, just checking is 12 pound 50. So one child is £12.50. And now I know the cost of a child. I'm going to substitute that into um, an equation above. So I'm going to sub uh, child equals £12.50. I'm actually going to choose equation 2 because I think it's a nicer end number. So in 2. So that would be 3 adults plus 4 lots of £12.50 is equal to the 101. So that's 3 adults plus 4 times that answer comes to 50 quid, is equal to 101 pounds. I'm going to take the 50 off the 101, so 101 take away that answer comes to 51. I'm then going to divide that by 3, and I find out the cost of an adult ticket was 17 quid. Now, check very carefully that I have answered the question. It says, use an algebraic method to calculate the total amount paid by a group of four adults and two children, so I have not answered the question. Four adults would be four lots of 17, plus the two children would be two lots of 1250, and that would come to whatever it comes to. So four brackets 17. Let me turn my calculator off. No, it's just not working. Okay, let me just choose another. Oh, there we go, it's working now. So four lots of 17. plus two lots of 12.50, comes to 93 pounds, okay, 93 pounds. Next question, question seven. Okay, factorizing, we've done a lot of work on this recently. Adds to make the middle number, times is to make the end number. So I'm thinking, what two numbers times together to make minus 21? Well, forget about the minus for a moment. Numbers that times together to make 21, are one and 21, 21 and one, three and seven, seven and three. Okay, now the fact that that's a minus there means the only way I can times get a minus is having one plus sign and one minus sign. So if I have a plus on the one and a minus on the 21, that would make it. And similarly, if I had a plus on the 21 and a minus on the one, that would also make it. One take away 21 would be minus 20. That's no good. I'm supposed to be getting minus four. So that's no good. 21 take away one would just make normal 20. That's still no good. I'm supposed to be making minus four. Plus on the three, minus on the seven. That gives me minus 4. That's exactly the combination I want. So all I do now, because it's x squared, I just do x minus 7, because that was the minus bit, and then bracket x plus 3 equals 0. 
Now that saying something times by something is equal to zero. The only way that can happen is either the x minus 7 equals zero or the x plus 3 equals zero. To get x on its own, take the minus 7 over, it becomes x equals plus 7 or x equals minus 3. Okay, to solve these ones here, the way you like to do it is doing the upside down ironing board method. So that would give me 8 brackets x minus 7 plus 4 brackets 2x plus 5 all over 4 times 8. That would still equal 1 half. I'm going to times by the 4 by 8 and I'm going to get 32. And I'm going to expand out the first bracket to get 8x minus 56 plus 8x plus 20 equals a half. I'm now going to bring around this divide by 32 and bring it around to the other side and get times by 32. So I'm going to get a half times 32. I can put that into my calculator if I want. 8x plus 8x is 16x. Minus 56 plus 20, I'm just going to check, minus 56 plus 20 is minus 36. A half times by 32 is 16. 16, I'm going to then take this minus 36 over and it's going to become a plus 36 and that's going to equal 16x. So 16x is equal to 52. So x is equal to 52 divided by 16. And that is going to go into my calculator. 52 divided by 16 comes to 3.25. There is a way you can check if you wanted to. Brackets, x, so ands, minus 7 over 4, bring that round to the side, plus bracket, 2 ands, so you just replace x with ands, plus 5 over 8. When I press equals, it should give me a half. If it's not a half, I've gone wrong. If it is a half, I know I'm leaving the exam with four marks, which is just by there. Equals a half. I know I'm definitely leaving the exam with those marks. Happy days. Okay, question eight. Now, this is requiring your knowledge of circle theory to be pretty good. You're told that this was a diameter. So if this is a diameter, B to D is a diameter, that means the angles on that are nine, uh, sorry, 180 degrees. This angle here then, by definition, must be 90 because this one's always half of that one. Okay. Also, think of the bow tie. If that's 36, this one's 36 by definition. Okay. Um, now, it did say you must give reasons for your answer, so I need to write that down. So I'm going to say D, C, B, that means going from D to C to B, equals 90 degrees because... Um, angle at circumference is half angle at centre. You need to learn that definition if you didn't know it. I'm then going to say C, D, B, C to D to B um, equals 36. And the proper reason for that is angles in the same segment, angles in the same segment, Are equal but I always think of that as the bow tie that's how I remember that when I see it okay but if you just write down bow tie in the exam it won't get you any marks okay I'm now spotting a right angle triangle here I just want to find out or I just want to use trigonometry so I'm supposed to be finding out B to C there I've got an angle that's opposite the angle there that's the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle and then I know the adjacent because I know the adjacent and I want to find the opposite that is telling me to use tan Tan theta is equal to Sokotoa, Sokotoa. So um, I've got to use tan. Tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. So I want to write by here. Tan uh, 36 is equal to the opposite. So that would be BC, don't know what that actually is, divided by the 5.1. So then I'm going to bring this divide by 5.1 over here. Do 5.1, 5.1 times tan 36. Now when I actually put that into my calculator, I'm not going to put the time sign in because my calculator knows it should be there, but I do have to put a bracket around the end, and I get the answer 3.7 blah blah blah, so I'm going to say BC is equal to 3.7 centimetres to one decimal place. Okay? Question 9. Question 9. Okay, so you will be assessed on the quality of your written communication in this question. It says, this distance, uh, you can't even read that name, ran the 400 metre race in 
the year the sports event, uh, the distance was measured to correct the nearest 0.5 meters. Now, a way that I saw that I really like this, distance, upper bound, lower bound, okay? Now the distance was 400 meters. It was measured to the nearest 0.5 meters. So what you do with that is your 0.5 meters, you always have whatever they tell me is measured to the nearest. So 0.5 divided by two is 0.25. To work out the upper bound, I always do the 400 add 0.25. Don't worry about the logistics into it, that's how you do it, okay? To find the lower bound, you always do the distance given, subtract that number, which would be 399.75 meters, okay? But chuck it into your calculator, you've got a calculator here. The time was 74 seconds. Measured to the nearest second, measured to the nearest second. So the nearest second is the nearest one second. Divide that by two would be 0.5 seconds. So I need to do 74 add 0.5 seconds, which would be 74.5 seconds, and 74 minus 0.5, which would be 73.5 seconds. That gets you two marks straight away in the whole thing, okay? So two very, very easy marks. I then need to work out the greatest and possible average speed. So I'm thinking of my triangle here. So speed is equal to distance divided by time. And because I want to find speed, I wanted to use speed equals distance over time. Okay, find the least and the greatest possible average speed. Okay, so for the least speed, the least speed. Okay, so think about this logically. The least speed must be when I've covered the least amount of distance in the most amount of time. It will always be that if you're trying to work out the least and the most, that you work in diagonals here. So the distance, 399.75 divided by the most amount of time. Okay, and I'm going to reference that because this is a Q or an OCW question. Okay, so least distance, least distance, most time for lowest speed. Okay, and I might just reference this is to work out uh, is to work out speed, distance, time. From a chat that I had with someone who marks these papers, they said, "Look, just make sure there's no calculations." That, um, that are sort of like descriptive of where you've done it. So I'm going to go back and write stuff next to those in a moment, but I'm going to worry about it after. Okay, that's going in for work out my least speed would be 399.75 over 74.5. That comes to uh, this number here, which I'm just going to check is right. Yep, yeah. it comes to five point. Now they did say they wanted the answer to three significant figures. So that's 5.3 seven to three sig figs. Okay, you start counting after the first number. So one, two, three, that five would change that to a seven. Okay, and then to work out the greatest speed, the greatest speed would be the smallest possible distance. I just realized I've made a mistake here, haven't I? You know, the least distance, the least speed. No, 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 that's fine. Ah, yes, 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 I have made a mistake. Okay, sorry, my bad, I'll do this in a different color. Um, to work out the least speed. No, I'm talking rubbish. I'm fine. I'm fine. Sorry if I confuse myself. I'm doing fine. The greatest speed would be me covering the greatest possible distance, which would be 400.25 in the smallest amount of time. So in 73.5 seconds. Okay. So that is the greatest distance. Greatest distance in the smallest or in the least time. Okay, so if I do that, I get 400.25 divided by 73.5 comes to, don't like that dot there on the 4, because that means recurring. I just press it one more time and it gets rid of everything. And again, rounded to three decimal places, that would be 4, 5. Okay, that 5 rounding that one up there. So that would give me um, three significant figures. Now, two things that I need to do. I can't just write down that. That's meters divided by seconds, so it's ms. You've got to give units in an OCW question, so meters per second. Any calculations I haven't described here? Well, I have there. That's upper bound. I, may, I think that's pretty clear that that's the upper bound. But here, um, half to find 
upper bound and lower bound. Okay, same there and there. Okay, and now I think I've done a pretty good job of actually describing my work. Someone might say, is the organization, mine's a little bit hectic going on, isn't it? In some respects, I wish I'd take a bit more time, okay? But um, you hopefully have time in the exam where you can actually go through and think, what, have I laid this out properly, etc., etc. okay? Okay, question 10. Now, I'm going to show you the proper way to do this, and I'm going to show you a very, very, very neat trick if this ever comes up in a calculator question. This here, you are going to write, you'll leave a line and say x equals 0.4919191. That's what that means. It means that 91 is reoccurring. Because it has got two dots on it, I'm going to times that by 100. If it had one dot on it, I would have times by 10. If it had three dots on it, I would have times by 1,000. So I'm going to times by 100. So x times by 100 would be 100x. Make sure you line up your equals. Make sure you line up your decimal point. I'm now going to times this by 10, uh, by 100, sorry, which will shift everything along two places. So 49 will now become 49 there, and then it was a 1 straight after that, then it was a 919191. What that does, by multiplying it the way I've done it, is it will make sure that all the numbers stay aligned. I'm now going to subtract the bottom line from the top. So, what is 100x take away x? Well, that answer is 99x. What is 1 take away 1? Cancel, cancel. All of this is cancelling until here. 1 take away 4? Can't do it. Borrow 1 from here. 11 take away 4? 7. 8 take away nothing? 4 take away nothing. So x is 48.7 divided by 99. Big issue here. You cannot have a decimal within a fraction. So I need to times top and bottom by 10. 487 over 990 as my final answer. Okay? So, the next thing I need to do now, I said there's a really neat way of me showing you what the answer is here, okay? And the neat way of doing that is putting it into my calculator, 0.4, and pressing Shift and X squared, and then 9, and then pressing Shift and X squared, 1. If I press that in there, it says syntax error. And the reason why is I did like a space between those things there. If I delete that for a second, there we go, it should work now. There we go, it told me what the answer was, 487, okay? Silly by the WJC to have put that in, okay? Part B, it says, um, the following statement, true or false, circle the correct answer. The evaluation of A to two-thirds will always be an integer, integer providing it's a multiple of three. We'll chuck in a number into that where A is a multiple of three. Multiple of three means it's in a three times statement, so I'm going to choose three. Three to the power of two-thirds equals three to the power of... Now again, this calculator is not working. Go. Three. To the power of two thirds. Just like they've got there, press equals. False. It's not true. 2.0800, blah, blah, blah. The reason why is um, that over three there means cube rooted. So it will be an integer providing that you always put in a cube number there. So for instance, if I put in 8 into that, it will be an integer because 8 is a cube number. If I put in 27 into that, it will be an integer because it's a cube number. Okay. Um, again, this one here is silly on the WJC's part. You can put this into a calculator if it comes up into a calculator um, paper. So square root of 200 is 10 root 2. Where is it? There. Why though? What you do is you look for the biggest square number that you know goes into 200. That is 100. 100 times 2. Now, you can square root those separately. Square root of 100 is 10 times. You don't need to write times when we're talking maths. You just put things next to each other. It's 10 root 2. This one here, we need to put in a square number into that. Square number that goes into 45 is 9. 9 times 5. Square root of 9 times the square root of 5. That is 3 root 5. I've now got the statement here, root 5 plus 3 root 5. If I ask you what x plus 3x is, you would tell me it's 4x. So root 5 plus 3 root 5 must be 4 root 5 there. But again, you could put that into your calculator and actually do it for you. Okay, 4 root 5. Probably won't go up in a calculator paper though, especially with people like me making videos on it. Okay, 11. Stratified sampling. Um, it tells me here that the company wants to make a stratified sample of the 40 members of staff to find out their views. This is basically doing percentages, but instead of times it by 100 to get it as a percentage, 
the times by 40 because they want 40 people. You need to work out how many people are in the group. So that's adding all those numbers together. So 125 plus 30 plus 18 plus 87 comes to 260. Show what you're doing. Don't just have that pop up out of nowhere. Equals 260. And then to work out the males, uh, so male full time, so male full T, be 125 out of the total times by 40. 125 out of the total times by 40. That comes to that number, SD, it comes to 19.2. Don't like the decimal points, 19.2, which would be 19 from here, 19 uh, males full time. Okay, uh, female full time. That would be 30 out of the total times by 40. So I'm just using the replay button now, using that formula so I don't have to write it in every time. That comes to, I'm going to round this straight away, 4.6. So that's going to be equal to 5. Male part-time would be equal to uh, 18 over 260, blah, blah, blah. And that comes to, again, show your calculations. Don't just have it pop up out of nowhere. Just make the examiner really confident in you what you're doing, which will be equal to 3. And then female part-time would be 87 over 260 times by 40, which comes to 13.4, so 30, let's say 13.3, blah, 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 which is then uh, 13. Now just double check, 19 plus 5 plus 8 plus 13, what's that? 19 plus 5 plus 3 plus 13 comes to 40, 40 people selected. Okay, if I'd add 0.5s on two of them, I could have rounded both of those up and got an extra person. Then you'd have to choose which one should have more. I would have said, say it happened with this one here, I would have said, well, choose the females because there's more females in the company than, than males, for instance. Okay, Okay. number 12, velocity time graph. Now, this was done very badly by my class. It said, calculate an estimate for the acceleration when t of the train when t equals 20 seconds. This is how you do it. t, 20 seconds. You go and find it. You go and draw a tangent at that point. A tangent should have roughly the same area each side between the graph. So it should be something like that. And it can be a really long line. Think of it like a bow tie. If I had a bow tie, I'd want to have the same area both sides. If I had like a bow tie, I want it looking something like that. Something like like little guy on the apprentice. I would not want to have a bow tie that looked like that because it looked like a fool. Okay? So how do I work out the acceleration from that? I need to know. So I'm gonna say acceleration would be equal to rise over run, is what I remember it. I prefer it like that because it's alliterative, but I think some of you might call that step, maybe. Same thing, okay? So I'm gonna try and find a nice thing. Where have I risen? Well, I've risen from here, 20 to 30. Okay, so that's uh, a rise of 10. I have gone along how far? I've gone from eight over to 20. So that is a distance of 12. Okay, so my acceleration would be my rise, 10 divided by 12. So 10 divided by 12 comes to 0.8. Now I can put the 8.3 reoccurring and that would be meters um, ms to the minus 2 of the units that we use for acceleration. Okay, but they're looking to see, if I show you the mark scheme very quickly, they're looking to see tangent drawn, that's really important, idea of increase in y, increase in x, rise over run, gradient reasonable from their tangent, okay, and then ms to the minus 2, like I said, or m o slash s squared, okay. Um, so, from there, I don't know if you actually saw any of that, let me put that back, no you didn't, sorry, I just saw on my screen there, so it was, uh, where is it, it was that bit there. Okay, feel free to pause the video and have a quick look through. Now from this one here, you, some of you are really unlucky because it said, use the trapezium rule with ordinates 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60 to calculate an estimate for the distance travelled in the first 60 seconds. Now although it says an estimate, that's what the tra trapezium rule does because it's a curve, it's not like a definite, definite, definite. You still have to be really, really, really accurate here. Okay, that's 0, 10, 20, etc. It means you need to draw lines from the 10 to the 20, etc, etc, until you hit the graph. And you've got to be unbelievably accurate reading this off. If you're not, you will lose a mark. Okay. So, this I'm going to call A, B, C, D. 
E, and F. And I'll work out the areas along here. Okay, although I haven't got enough room to write down the formula, you should write down the formula of what you're doing in the, uh, in the exam. Now this, I'm going to treat as a triangle, hence it's, a, it's an estimate. So it's gone to, for me, it's gone up to 9. Okay, So that's a height of 9, a width of 10, so it would be 9 times 10 divided by 2, which would be 45 metres. Okay, It's just the area of the shapes here. Now this shape here is a trapezium. So it's going to be, and I'm putting this into my calculator now, a half of the parallel side, so that is going to be the 9 that I just had, 9 plus, and then that actually stops on 30, and then times by the height, which is this distance between here, 10 and 20, so times by 10, and that comes to 195 metres. For C, 32, so I'm just going to change that 30 to 32, 30 plus 32 times by 10, no minus sign, is 310 metres. D, that's pretty much the, no it's not, look I'm being really accurate here, it's 33, okay, so 33, 315, oh hang on I made a mistake there, it's not, didn't change the front number, that needs to change to 32, so just be careful if you're rushing like me, so 325 metres there, that would be annoying, so then the next one, so I'm going to change that now in readiness so I don't make the same mistake twice, 33, that for me is 39, so that comes to 360 metres. And then finally 39 and 40. 39 and 40. So that comes to 395. So to work out the total distance now, I need to add all of these numbers together. So 45 plus 195 plus the 310, etc. Okay, and I have got uh, 1630 now. I can tell you now, I've made a mistake somewhere because the mark scheme is only accepting 1,640. So you've got to be really eagle-eyed here. I've got to work out where I've made my mistake. I might have done the same mistakes I did before. Um, so they're not going into detail there. They're giving that as 39.40. They are giving that um, 39.40. Yeah, they gave that as 33. And they gave that as 32. I had that. They gave that as 30. And... If that was nine. Oh, they're giving it as ten, so it's my fault. Yeah, but it's it's not really clear that you could argue with that 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 could be the nine. So they're giving that as ten. That's where I've lost a mark there. So I've lost actually one of those three marks, which is very very irritating. I would have actually only got two out of three for that. But they're giving that as ten. So this should have actually been um, ten times ten divided by the two. Now that means I've still lost another mark somewhere. I've not been accurate enough. Okay, so you're going to have to obviously you've got better eyes than me. I'm actually. In a, reasonably dark room because my lights have gone off. Um, make sure you're really, really accurate. If you think you know where the mistake was that I made, please come and tell me. Oh, it would have altered this one as well because I took that as nine, so they both go up by five, right, I've got it. Okay, But be as accurate as you possibly can because, like I said, they were taking marks off for that bit. Okay, number 13. Um, it says here, a right circular cone of vertical height 10 centimetres. So the height of this cone, the right angle there, is uh, 10 centimetres. Uh, base radius of 5, now that also tells me the, the cylinder there, it's attached to a cylinder of the same radius and this height is 8 centimetres. Okay, it says calculate the total surface area, not volume, I was assuming it was a volume question, the surface area of the shape. Well to do that I need to come check this question here. Curved surface area of a cone. So cone area, which I'll write by here so I don't have to look back, is pi r l. Okay. Now L is the diagonal length here. I don't have the diagonal length, I'll have to go and work that out. Okay, we've already used the theorem that we used to work that out. Now the cylinder, if I had a cylinder, I don't know if this is actually going to work from here, but say that's a cylinder there. If I was to flat pack it, it works out that it's just a rectangle, okay? So the cone, we'll worry about in a second. Let's do the cylinder first. Cylinder area. So it's like me chopping that there down the middle and then flattening it out would just be a rectangle. Now I know what its height is, it's 8 centimetres. How long is this line here? Well if I flatten that out it would be the distance around the circle. So that is actually the circumference which is 2 pi r or pi d to work out how long that is. So the cylinder area would be 2 pi r, so that's 2 pi times the radius which was 5, 
and then it should be multiplied by 8, and that will work out the cylinder area for me. So 2 pi brackets 5 times that by 8 comes to 80 pi. Now I'm going to leave that as 80 pi just to put it into my calculator to find the final answer. You don't round answers until you're totally finished, okay? So at the moment it's 80 pi. Cone area. Cone area is um, pi r l. Now I need to work out what l is. So it's a right angle there, so that means I'm using pi thang. So it would be 10 squared plus 5 squared would be equal to l squared. That is 125 is equal to l squared. Square root that. Now that's going to tell you in your calculator it's 5 root 5. I'm going to leave it as that for now, so I can then go and work out what the cone area is properly. Cone area is pi, brackets, times by the radius, so that's 5, times by L, which is 5, root 5, and that will give me a really accurate answer. So, pi, 5, and then 5, root 5, I'll just write it like that, but I've not written it properly. So, pi, 5, and then 5, root 5 equals, and it comes to 175.6, blah, blah, blah. Now, I can't write that in a nicer way, so I'm just going to write that for the moment, and then I'm going to say total area, total area will be equal to 80 pi, add that 175.6, blah, blah, blah. The way I'm going to put that into my calculator is say ants plus 80 pi, and that comes to 426.9 centimetres squared, and that is to one decimal place. Okay, now I've gone wrong somewhere here because I missed something, right? There's total surface area. That's not the total surface area. I'm missing something. Any idea what it is? I've got the cone, I've got the cylinder, I missed the circle. Okay, I need to add on the area of the circle, which would be add pi r squared. So that would be add pi 5 squared. So then add to that pi times 5 squared. Okay, that comes to a total of 505.5. 5 centimetres squared to one decimal place. Okay? Almost getting there now. Number 14. Now, th this thing here was a massive hint for what you're going to have to do here. And it's saying solve to two decimal places. That's more or less telling you to use um, the quadratic formula. If it's a part A and a part B, it says hence solve this equation, it's linked. Okay? So lots of you not getting any marks this and you know exactly how to use the quadratic formula. By all means, pause it and see if you can beat me to the answer before you try. Upside down ironing board again. Be very, very careful because you've got a minus sign. It makes everything a bit harder. So you can get 3 brackets x plus 4 because there's two things. Minus 5 brackets x minus 1 again in brackets there's two things. All over 2x minus 1 times by x plus 4 equals 6. Don't like this thing here, I'm going to take it round to the other side where it's going to times by. I'm now going to expand the brackets to get 3x plus 12 minus 10x, but then minus 5 times minus 1 is going to give me plus 5, so watch out for that. It's going to then be 6, 2x minus 1, and then x plus 4 there. I'm going to expand that using foil and then times everything by 6. I'm also going to lump together anything I can here. 3x minus 10x is minus 7x, and then plus 12 plus um, 5 is plus 17. That is going to give me 2x squared uh, plus 8x minus x minus 4. I'm now going to times each of those things by 6. So that's going to give me 12x squared plus 48x uh, minus 6x and then minus 24. Okay, I'm now going to leave nothing on that side to get the equal zero like they have, but I've just got it on the other side to them. There's nothing with x squared in here. When I bring over the minus 7x and bring it over, it's going to plus 7x, so I'm going to have 48 minus 6 plus 7, and that comes to 49, so plus 49x. And then I've got a minus 24, and I want to take away a 17. I'm bringing the plus 17 over to become a takeaway, and that comes to minus 41, which is what they had up there. Okay, now I need to state A equals B equals C equals solve that. That is that from there. They told me it was that from there. I used the quadratic formula to solve that. So A would be 12, B would be 49, C would be minus 41. You must include any minuses. The quadratic formula given on the second page, go and check it. That thing there is minus B. I'm going to change the, uh, the letters to open brackets, plus or minus. B squared, so bracket squared, minus 4, brackets, brackets, all over 2 
brackets. You cannot go wrong if you use this method. So the first letter was B. So B, I've said, was 49. So 49 goes there. 49 also goes there because it was B again. Then it was A. So A was 12. 12 goes in there. And then C was minus 41. So minus 41 goes in there over 2A to 212. That plus minus means once you plus it, once you minus it. So I'll say plus x equals. So first of all, press the fraction button. Press that first, otherwise you'll get this wrong. 49 plus the square root of 49 squared minus 4 brackets 12 brackets minus 41. All over 2 brackets 12. Oh, something else there. 2 brackets 12. Close your brackets. That gave me an answer of... 0.71 to two decimal places as it said two decimal places now I'm going to do it where I do a minus it's a very quick way to do that replay button press the right one you can right back by the start of the fraction delete the plus sign to a minus sign and that equals minus uh, 4.80 to 2 dp important to show the zero two decimal places means you must have two numbers after the decimal place okay over the page, last one. Now this question, just to let you know, I thought was pretty, pretty hard work. There were some fantastic ways of doing it though, I've got to say, there's one or two that really impressed me. Um, we're told the area of this parallelogram is 48.5 centimetres squared, so that's the whole area. It then says calculate the length of the diagonal DB. So I'm just going to connect those up, there to there. Okay, now that has chopped that parallelogram in half. So that means this must be 24.25 centimetres squared, and this must have been 24.25 centimetres squared. Okay? Now, I'm supposed to go and work out DB. So opposite capital A is what we call little a. I'm supposed to go and work that out. This would be little d. That's not a d, is it? This would be little d, and I've got it, so I'm underlining it. I then have one angle, so at the moment I've got... One side, one angle, and I'm trying to find another side. You've got to have three bits of information. And I have. I know what the area is. Okay, now, the area formula is a half A, B, sine C. Now, if I go and highlight where A is, that's little a. There's little b. Where do those two lines meet? They meet at angle C, which is the angle that's given. Now, I know an angle, and I know this side here. And I actually know what the area is. So, using... A half AB sine C equals area. That's basically two sides that meet up at an angle. I've got the angle. It's 132. Sine. I change the A and B to open brackets. A half. Um, that would be this side here. Now, this would be little b that I don't know. That's little b that goes in there. And then 12.7 that would fit in there. That equals the area, which I know is 24.25. Now what I want to do is I want to get B on its own, so I can find out this length here, then I'll know two sides and an angle, and then I can find a third side using the cosine rule. So I'm going to take a half, which is times by 12.7, times by sine 32 over, so all of that will divide by the area. So that will be a half, and then it will be 12.7 sine 132 is equal to little b, and I will then find out what little b is. So 24.25 over 0.5, 12.7, and then sine 132. Comes to 5.138. Now, ideally, you're not going to actually round that answer. If you're feeling not confident enough, you can just round it to 5.1, but you may lose an accuracy mark in the next bit, okay? So just, just watch out for that, okay? Now I know this is 5.1, blah, blah, blah. I now know two sides, an angle I want to know a third side. That's telling me to use the cosine rule. You use the cosine rule when at the end of the question you want to know three sides, one angle. You use the sine rule when at the end of the question you want to know two sides and two angles. So the cosine rule states a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos capital A. Notice the angle that you have there is the little letter there. That's the side I want to find. That's the angle I've got. This is great. I don't need to do anything here. These two sides here meet at that angle. So I'm just going to change little c to little d in effect okay so that's going to be a squared is equal to b squared so i'm just going to say ants squared in my calculator i'm just using that through so it's nice and accurate plus 12.7 squared minus two brackets ands brackets 12.7 cos 132 and that will give me the answer for a squared not a so ants squared ands squared 
plus 12.7 squared minus 2 bracket ands bracket 12.7 cos 132. Close your bracket and I get that answer which is massive. That's not a problem because it's the answer squared. Still don't round that, you've not finished. So we square root that number now and we will get hopefully 16.6. So I know that's the answer. Yeah, 16.6 centimetres to one decimal place, and that concludes that paper.